are, you don't have a freaking clue. A lot of legends touch this turf. All Americans, Hall of Famers, National Champions. I gave my all here. They gave their all right here on this field. See, this place isn't just a football stadium. It's the Roman Coliseum of college football. It'll wrap you up. It'll consume your body and your soul. You can't think. You can't speak. Man, forget trying to hear. This place is unlike anything you've seen before. So tick tock, boys and girls. The countdown to kickoff starts now. He's down the sideline. Holy Toledo. There's Patrick Holloway. He's in there. Go for the bomb. Malone's got it. Oh, by there a flag on the play? I don't see one. Touchdown, Carter. Neyland Stadium in an uproar. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's Watch your soul, your soul. The Tennessee fans can care less. Still on his feet, breaks a tackle on the right sideline. Well, my goodness. Welcome, 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 everyone, to Countdown to Kickoff, presented by UT Knoxville alumni, Tennessee Athletics. Happy Big On Friday. And thank you so much for joining us for our virtual pep rally. I am Jason Swain, former Tennessee football player, UT alum, and host of the Swain event. This event would not be possible without our awesome sponsors, uh, including Cellular Sales, First Horizon, Graphic Creations, Graduate Knoxville, One River Walk, Pilot Company, Threads, Coca Cola, Food City, Farm Bureau Insurance, and UT Medical Center. Let's get started for today. Today's highlights include remarks from Chancellor Don D. Plowman, interview with VFL Jabbar Davis, recipe and demonstration from Dead End Barbecue, behind the scenes exclusives, Vol Fan of the Week, and more. To get started today, I'd like to welcome remarks from University of Tennessee's ninth Chancellor, Don D. Plowman. Chancellor Plowman, welcome to the show. Hi, Vol Nation. It's Don D. Plowman, Chancellor. What a great time to be a volunteer. I'm excited to tell you that this fall we have welcomed the largest freshman class in history. And guess what? A bunch of them came from Florida because our out-of-state enrollments are up. We actually have students from 44 different states excited to be here and be a volunteer. Earlier this week, I had the opportunity at the flagship address to talk a bit about our new strategic vision, which will be going before the Board of Trustees next month. But for today, the most exciting thing is we're headed to the swamp, and I'm so excited about that football game. I've never been there. Uh, that's on my bucket list to go to a game down there when we beat Florida. I could not be more excited about Coach Heupel, all of his coaches, and the things they're doing in our football program. Our players are showing so much enthusiasm and I'm just excited to be a Vol. I know you are too. So let's have a great victory and go Vols. Thank you so much, Chancellor Plowman. Good to hear from you. The Vols have displayed a very high power offense to start uh, this season. Let's take a look back at the highlights from last week when the Vols tallied 56 points against Tennessee Tech. Hooker throws long to the end zone. That pass is going to be caught in the back corner of the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Javante Pate. Right, they hand it to him. Falls forward and into the end zone. Quick slant, complete to Bayless Jones. Breaks a tackle to the 30. Gets to the 20. Makes a move to the 10, to the 5, to the checkerboard. Touchdown, Tennessee. Hooker keeps it, throws it into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacob Warren. And then goes over right guard and in for a Tennessee touchdown. That pass intercepted by Page at the 32 yard line. Page goes down the right sideline across the field to the 20, to the 10. Solon Page is going to take it in for a touchdown. Third and goal. One yard line handoff. Evans and he dives into the end zone. Harrison 
Bailey fakes the handoff to Whitehead, keeps him around the right side, rushes in for a Tennessee touchdown. Tomorrow night in the swamp. Ooh, I can't wait. Cannot wait to see that orange or white down there in the swamp. But tomorrow night, uh, the Vols will have to fire on all cylinders to walk away with the victory. There's some keys that I think that will ensure the victory for the Tennessee Volunteers. Number one, I think we need to be special on special teams. Tennessee right now, one of the top teams in the country on special teams. Thanks to Coach Eckler. Thanks to the players for taking special teams serious and giving their all. Uh, during one of the most important phases of the game. Actually, one-third of the football game is special teams, and Tennessee's done a great job uh, with that so far. Have to win that battle. Field position, making field goals, knocking down punts, pinning Florida, making them drive the length of, of the football field when they're on offense. I think we have to be special in special teams. Uh, number two, I think we need to have explosive pass again. I think it's vital. Uh, for us. Florida does a really good job of stopping the run. We saw that last week against Alabama. Uh, they did not let Alabama run the football against them. So to generate offense, we got to hit them over the top. Big plays. Uh, we have the quarterbacks. We have the speed on the outside. Just have to connect. I think that's going to be very, very important as well. And number three, turnover margin. Uh, super important. We have to get more turnovers from Florida than we have ourselves on offense or on special teams. We can't allow ourselves to be minus one, minus two in the turnover margin. We have to put ourselves in position to have more possessions than Florida. I think that will give us a chance uh, to come out on top if we do those things and maybe a little bit more. Maybe have to do a little bit more things. But those three certainly are very, very important for Tennessee to come out of Gainesville with the victory. And it's a good feeling. It's a great feeling. Uh, I'm joined by someone that knows a little bit about beating Florida uh, not only just being on the team and beating Florida, but making big plays in the game, scoring touchdowns, uh, and that is my my friend Jabari Davis. Uh, Jabari, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me, Swain. I appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Uh, Jabari, you go by the nickname Gator Killer because you have some of your best games against Florida, uh, touchdown runs, uh, whether it's you know, goal line, diving over the top like in 2001, or a long run uh, for a scamper and score like 2003. Uh, you are one of the few players that have that have uh, beat Florida twice on the road. What do you think it's going to take to go down there and beat the guys, beat the, beat the Gators in the swamp? Uh, <clears throat> just having a lot of confidence, a lot of swagger. As soon as you get off the bus, you got to have a great mental mindset to know that we're here for one thing only, and that's to come out with a win and do whatever we got to do on that field to find ways to win on all, you know, phases of the game. Uh, number, you know, you went over the phases, but I think, you know, the number one thing going into a hostile environment like that, man, is that you got to take away the home field advantage and you got to take away that Gator chum. So we can strike early and uh, put the defense back against their ears and make everybody shut up and stop being so loud. We'll have some momentum to uh, have some type of success, man. But I'm excited to see what this new football team and what these new coaches are going to do. Being a running back in this type of game, you can expect to be sore <laughs> afterwards. Uh, what do you remember most about your two trips to the swamp? Well, my first trip, you know, that was the 2001 game, so that was a very special moment, not just in Tennessee football, but just in America. You know, we were scheduled to play Florida earlier in the year, but uh, that weekend uh, they canceled all sports because of 9-11. So we had to sit back and just, uh, you know, pray for this country and just be with family during that time. So it was very special when they rescheduled the game and, um, you know, they moved it right after um, our Vanderbilt game. So we played – a week before the SEC championship. But that first game, man, just uh, watching Travis Stevens go to work, you know, that was the game that really put him over the hump, I feel, being one of the top five greatest running backs of all time. I mean, he just put on the clinic tape and just knowing how to step up to the occasions when your number is called. So being a young guy, you know, I was able to score two touchdowns and help him when he was tapped out a little bit. And just that energy throughout that football team, that leadership, and that, uh, you know, that confidence that we had just as a whole unit 
really helped us get that W. Then in 2003, man, that was your freshman year. So, Swain, yeah. don't give me a lot of props when you was out there making plays, too. And I just want to touch down like you. Yeah, but, hey, you put me <laughs> in a position to score with that big I mean. catch that you had. So, uh, I mean, you remember that game, man. It was hot. It was muggy. It was hostile. Everybody was going crazy. The fans were booing us. They were throwing stuff at us. But yeah. Coach Former challenged us. Hey, we're down here to win. And Coach Former always told us our goal was to get to Atlanta and try to get to the SEC championship every year. That was a standard in the culture, of, you know, of which we were playing. And we were not going to let Florida stop that. So we went down there and we just made a statement. Everybody stepped up. Games like that, you have to find guys to step up. You stepped up as a true freshman. I stepped up and pound the rock, got everybody tired, so opened up the passing game a little bit. And, uh, you know, when it came down to the crunch time, short yardage, goal line stuff, I was able to do my thing and be able to pound those guys to help us finish off that win and come back to Knoxville so we can go party. <laughs> Who are you looking at on this football team? Because, you know, it's going to take a – uh, big effort from some key players. You know, you, you, we had our stars. You know, Casey Clawson showed out in that game in 2003. You know, you mentioned 2001, Travis Stevens just putting on uh, just a great performance. Uh, James Banks had a touchdown, Hail Mary right before Thank the half. You. So it takes it takes some big-time uh, plays, some big-time players. Who are some guys on this football team in this game tomorrow that you're looking at and uh, you want to see a good performance from or that you think we will see a good performance from? As a former running back, you know, I'm passionate about that position, just like you are when it comes to wide receiver play, man. So I want to see that running back that's going to step up, who's going to tell the coach, hey, give me the ball 25, 30 times a game. Let me get into a groove. Let me make people miss. Let me pound the rock. Let me take control of this offense. And, you know, let me be the engine of this of this football team while we're down here. So I want to see a running back step up, uh, somebody that's going to take over. Um, also at, at the wide receiver position, I'm still waiting for that big breakout game from Jalen Hyatt. I know you've been talking about that on your show. He has all the skills to be that breakout type, um, to be that breakout type wide out. You know, Jalen put it all together this weekend. Let's see what we can do. And also defensively, um, I'm looking for a linebacker to step up. You know, also that 2001 game, Eddie Moore, 2003 game, you know, Kevin Burnett, Kevin Simon, uh, even the late great Paris Harrison. He had a tremendous game as a young guy. You know, we were all young guys back then, and uh, we stepped up. You know, we didn't need seniors to tell us, hey, you need to step up. We took it amongst ourselves to uh, challenge one another and come out with this win. So if I could go for number one, man, I, I want to see a running back rise to the top. I like it. I like it. What was uh, the your most rememberable moment from – uh, your games, not just going to the Swamp, but just playing Florida in general. I mean, you played them four years. Um, but what was the moment that stood out to you the most about your playing career, your time against the Gators? Uh, 2001, even though 2003, I was the MVP and uh, SEC Player of the Week that game, you know, from just uh, had a lot of great runs that second half. But 2001 was so special because of 9-11. Um, so special because all the great teammates I played with on that team, from Travis Stevens to uh, John Henderson, Albert Hainsworth, Dante Stallworth, Jason Wynn, all those guys. And coming back to Knoxville, if any older VFLs from my era remember when we came back to Knoxville, we had a huge celebration and party on Tom Black uh, track. It was about 10,000 people uh, waiting on us, man, when we came back to Knoxville. I've never seen anything like that in the last 25 years in Knoxville, uh, having a celebration on campus for the football team. So that holds a special memory in my heart. I like it, I like it. Jabbar Davis, a VFL, taking time out of his day to join us, talking Tennessee, Florida. Uh, Jabbar, thank you so much for, for joining us uh, today. And go Vols, go and Vols. let's go out and get this win this weekend, my friend. Yes, sir, man, y'all take care. Thank you, thank you. Uh, that's Jabari's keys. Uh, just to review uh, my keys for the game. Uh, number one, special teams. Got to have special teams. Got to make sure uh, that special teams are special. And number two, explosive plays in the passing game. Got to get some of those big-time throws over the top uh, to make the Florida defense uh, honest. 
Got to be able to run the football, but must throw the ball over the top and got to have explosive plays on the outside. Jabari just mentioned Jalen Hyatt. He has the speed. Uh, Jimmy Callaway has the speed. We have guys that can get behind the Florida defense. We just have to hit it over the top, and um, I think we'll have a chance to do that on uh, tomorrow night. And number three, win the turnover margin. So those are my three, three keys to the game, win the turnover margin, special teams, and hitting – Big plays over the top. Thank you so much, Jabari, for uh, joining us today. Take your volunteer spirit on the road with the new official license plate for Tennessee alumni. The purchase of each plate supports student scholarships and enables success of volunteers today and tomorrow. You can learn more about these plates at alumni.utk.edu slash license plate. And they are nice look at that checkerboard with the power t let everyone know on the road who you represent i love it i love it this season we will feature a local alumni on business for our recipe of the week this week we are excited to share dead end barbecue owned by alum george ewart let's take a look at the dead end brisket recipe for game day hello my name is george ewart i'm one of the owners of dead end barbecue in knoxville tennessee and what we're going to do today is show you how to properly cook a brisket. This is a whole brisket. It's about 12 pounds. And what you're going to do is just kind of want to open it up so you don't cut the meat. And we're going to make a couple cuts on this so it's all flat. Uh, the brisket wall will be cooking evenly once we uh, trim it out. This is the, the flat of the brisket and this is the point. Hence, brisket is the fifth Starts at the fifth bone at the pectoral muscle of a cow. It's a real tough cut of meat. So we're gonna trim this out. We're gonna get this thing so it's flat. We're gonna take off this back fat cap. And now we're gonna trim the edges because these small points right here are gonna burn in the process. And when you cut it uh, at the end and slice it, they'll just fray. This is the a really hard fat area and you want to take that whole fat area out because it won't cook down. Brisket has also got a membrane. See how uh, hazy this uh, meat is? So we're going to take that out so we can get the uh, rub into the meat. So it's just a nice cut across. And you want to keep your blade angled up at all times. You can see the difference between the two right now. Cut off a little bit of this. And now we'll have a flat brisket. Now we've uh, trimmed the brisket down so it's going to be laying flat. It's going to be a more equal, even cook. And we're going to add some olive oil to it. For some reason, brisket does really well with uh, olive oil as a binder that will hold our rib in, I mean our rub. Make sure you get it all coated. And now I've included a rub in our recipe. This is the rub that we're gonna be using. And what you wanna do is get a nice even coat all the way across. Make sure that you get all the meat covered. I'm gonna get the edges. <clears throat> this is your brisket, it's all rubbed. And what you wanna do now is let it rest for about an hour and let all this seasoning absorb into the top layer of the meat. That's gonna help you get your bar. Now this thing is rested an hour and we're gonna load it in the smoker and we're gonna cook this thing at 225 degrees. And we're gonna do it until the internal temperature of the meat reaches 165 degrees internally. Now the brisket's been in here, it's reached internal temperature of 165 degrees. We're gonna take it out and we're gonna wrap it. So we're gonna make a boat out of our foil. And we got about 16 ounces of beef stock or beef bouillon, whichever one you wanna use. And we're gonna kind of give this thing a light bath. 
And then we're gonna wrap it really tight. We don't want this thing to steam because it will change uh, the texture of the meat. So we're gonna make sure that we wrap it real tight. This thing goes back into the smoker until it's 195 degrees internal temperature. So we, we've got this brisket came out, it's 195 degrees internal temperature wise. Uh, you can see that the au jus of this thing has soaked into the meat as well and produced some additional au jus. And now we're gonna slice it. We sliced it. I think I'm gonna take a bite of it. Mm, that's a Tennessee brisket. Go Vols. Wow. Did y'all see that? Oh, my goodness. Uh, I think I know what I'll be making pregame for the Tennessee Florida game. Thank you so much, George, for the demonstration on a uh, nice Tennessee brisket there, Daddy and Barbecue. A progressive past calls for an innovative future. Let's hear from VFL Charles Davis on where Tennessee athletics began and where it's going. The Tennessee Volunteers have a storied history of leading the way. For more than 50 years, our football program led the way in the Southeastern Conference in breaking down racial barriers. The first black SEC player to score a touchdown. The first black All-American in the SEC. I score, they tell me I have broken SEC record. The first black to start a quarterback on an SEC team. A truly indescribable quarterback. Gondridge Holloway is a preseason And the first black quarterback to lead an SEC team to a national championship. The national champion is playing in big old. All four of those trailblazers were Tennessee volunteers. The SEC's first black head basketball coach, we proudly took the lead there as well. We led the way on gender equity. It was here on Rocky Top that women's intercollegiate athletics was first supported and publicized at an elite level. From track and field to basketball and beyond, the Tennessee Lady Vols boldly proved to the country and the world that women's sports were deserving of the same respect, resources, and attention that were for far too long reserved only for men. And Tennessee takes the team championship. Tennessee made it cool for women to be fierce competitors, and we made it routine for women to be champions. As for the start of the facility's arms race, Tennessee was first out of the blocks. The Neyland Thompson Sports Center set the bar for indoor football training venues. Then the state-of-the-art Thornton Center took student-athlete academic support to an entirely new level. And long before network television shined a spotlight on college softball, Tennessee unveiled the venue by which all others in the sport came to be measured in Sherry Parker Lee Stadium. Over the last couple decades, we had our share of stumbles and the rest of the college sports world gained some ground on us. Now, it's time to catch our second wind. And if your blood doesn't already run orange, I certainly am counting on it running orange. Let's get back to being innovative. Fires over the top of him. Out front, good. Lost it under the Back to leading the way. Back to setting the standard and finishing first. Let's work together, every single one of us, to pull ahead of the pack again. I don't know about you, but I am fired up. I love me some Charles Davis. I love me some Tennessee. What a... Highlight video there from Charles Davis. I'm fired up. I know Dwayne Wiles is fired up. Uh, yeah. Dwayne, <laughs> our Associate Vice Chancellor for Alumni Affairs. Dwayne Wiles. Dwayne, are you fired up? Man, I'm fired up and ready to go. <laughs> I know that's right. Wow. That, that, that was so inspirational. It was so inspirational. And your interview with uh, Jabari was on fire, man. It was on fire. Thank you. Well, look, Jay, it's, it's good to be with you for another year of countdown to kickoff, and hello, Vol Nation. Before the game tomorrow against Florida, 
I just want to share with our viewing audience how you can be proud, be involved, and be invested in UT. First and foremost, number one, be proud by showing your big orange spirit and wearing orange every Friday. And as Jay mentioned earlier in the show, another way you can show your volunteer spirit year round is by purchasing that brand new UT license plate. Number two, be involved by using our lifelong resources, taking advantage of our leadership opportunities and attending in-person and also virtual events like this one today. Learn more at alumni.utk.edu. And lastly, number three, be invested in our students. Please help us continue to support students by giving at least one gift, any size, every year. And you can donate by simply texting VOLS to 865-345-5100. Ladies and gentlemen, it's that simple. Just text VOLS to 865-345-5100. Hey, Jay, thanks for having me again. I can't wait for tomorrow's game and go Big Orange. Uh, thank you so much, Dwayne. Really, really appreciate you. Uh, now it's time to give out some prizes. And before we enter that, I want to give a big congratulations to D. Dorsey, who is our Vol Fan of the Week. And if you want to win next week, all you have to do is follow Tennessee alum on Facebook, Twitter, or on Instagram for details to win. So that's the Tennessee alumni uh, account at T-E-N-N-A-L-U-M 10 alum on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram on details on how to win. And please make sure to join me next Friday as we count down the kickoff for the Missouri game. I'll be live at 1230 streaming on Facebook and on YouTube. And don't forget, tune in until tomorrow's game as Tennessee takes on Florida at 7 p.m. on ESPN. Go Big Orange and beat the Gators.